What's up, guys? James Carter TV, continuing my 2016 NFL Draft recaps. And today we are talking about the Los Angeles Rams. Yes, I finally got used to saying Los Angeles Rams. It took me a while, but I'm doing it now. Yes, I'm young, so I didn't live during the old Los Angeles Rams. So this is new to me, but don't worry. It's starting to roll off the tongue just fine. Let's start with their first pick. Jared Goff, out of California, the first overall pick after the Rams traded with the Tennessee Titans earlier in April. And at first I gave this pick a B- minus because I wasn't a big Jared Goff fan and I'm becoming more of a fan. I went back, I looked at more film. This is what I think. Okay, so he's 6'4", 220 pounds. Okay, so size, a little bit scarier than I'd like, but fine. Immobile. I mean, that's just the deal. In terms of being a guy that can get you uh, maybe a 20-yard run, not going to do it. And he has, I guess, okay mobility. I mean, it's passable. It's a Tom Brady-like mobility, like where he can move around in the pocket just fine. Maybe even more than Tom Brady. I think that Tom Brady's a little harsh. But more like a Matt Ryan. That, that's the comparison I keep going back to when it comes to his mobility. A guy that can certainly move in and out of the pocket just fine, but not going to do anything as soon as he passes the line of scrimmage. In terms of accuracy, very accurate within 30 yards. Didn't see too much beyond that. I think that's just the way the Kyle system was set up. And when I did, I wasn't in love with his deep ball accuracy, but I don't think it's a big negative, but I think it's there. In terms of pocket awareness, I don't love it. I think once he starts getting sacked, he gets frazzled easily and quickly. I don't love that combination with this Rams offensive line, which is still building. They have some pieces, Rob Havenstein and Jamon Brown and Greg Robinson, who isn't very good. And they hope to get some more gelling there. They're going to need to because Jerry Goff's going to need to have good protection or that's it. He can't do anything with bad protection. That's what pretty, that's one of the main reasons why Cal went 1-11 during his freshman year. Couldn't manipulate the pocket to save his life. Once the uh, protections broke down, he was screwed. And a lot of quarterbacks are, but in the college level, but in the NFL, you're going to have to be able to manipulate the pocket better than he did coming out of college. When you look at... His arm strength, passable, definitely passable. I just question his pocket awareness. I think that's his biggest notch for me. And I think there's limited upside as well. But I give it a B plus. I've said it on a B plus. The Rams needed a quarterback. They got one here. Will he be better than Sam Bradford was for them? I think so. I'm not 100% sure. I mean, there's a lot of busability here with Jared Goff. I think, once again, if they can't get this offensive line fixed, I mean, he's going to be a really offensive line dependent uh, quarterback. That's going to be his biggest problem. And hopefully they can get that offensive line fixed because if not... And he does, okay, he does a pretty good job of sitting in the pocket and taking a hit. I give you that. But he does too much of that. He shouldn't have to do that as much as he does that. That's a big problem I have when it comes to Jared Goff. So, anyway, we'll see how that works out. We move on to the fourth round. 110th pick overall, t uh, tight end Tyler Higby out of Western Kentucky. This guy used to be a wide receiver, and boy, do you see it. 6'6", 249 pounds. I probably may need to put on a little more size because my biggest problem with him is he doesn't play very strong. He's not a very good blocking tight end at all at this juncture. And that is something that he's going to be able to have to fix. You just had Jared Cook in there, and the biggest problem with him was that he couldn't catch the ball consistently. You're not going to have the problem with Tyler Higby because Tyler Higby does that. But also Jared Cook's biggest problem was run blocking and pass blocking. Tyler Higby also will not offer you much of that. But I do believe, actually, when you look two, maybe two years down the road, you will have improved at the tight end position, Tyler Higby over Jared Cook. Because this is a guy that will get you only, probably, at most, 800 yards. I don't think he's ever going to be a 1,000-yard guy, but will be a better 800 yards than Jared Cook would have ever gotten you. In fact, I don't think he ever got you that much, maybe 500, 600 at most. So if you've upgraded your tight end position here, I really like the pick. I give it a B plus. We move on. To actually give it an A minus. We move on to your next pick, fourth pick, 117th overall, wide receiver Pharaoh Cooper out of South Carolina. And I'm not a big Pharaoh Cooper fan. He doesn't have great length or size. He's 5'11, 197 pounds, soaking wet, pretty much. I don't know about that rating or that that scale that he got at the combine. Because I didn't see the 197. But ah, fine, I'll believe their 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 numbers on that. We have we don't have great size. We don't have great speed. I mean, he's not a burner. And being a guy that may have to make his life and livelihood in the slot, 
doesn't have great speed either. Biggest thing, though, biggest attribute is he catches the football well. He's a guy that you know when you throw it to him, he's going to catch the football. And he's he has some nice agility despite his lack of you know straight line speed. So that's nice to see. But in the fourth round, I think you could have still found better prospects at the wide receiver position. Farrell Cooper is not going to be your number one wide receiver, and you need one. Kenny Britt isn't one. Come on, guys. He's not. And also, Tavon Austin isn't either. And this guy resembles Tavon Austin a little too much for me. And so I only give it a B-. minus. We move on. Sixth round. Tied in to Marek Hemingway out of South Carolina State. Guy that ran a 471, one of the top performers at the 40 or for the 40 at the combine. A guy that put up nice bench bench reps uh, at the bench press reps at the combine as well. My biggest problem is he did not produce. If you go look at his South Carolina uh, state stats. There was no production there, so you're wondering. Okay, so I see these nice attributes. He's a nice athlete. He's pretty fluid when I see him doing the tight end drills. Why was there no production here in South Carolina State? Was their quarterback awful? What kind of system were they running? Uh, they were running a, a, a big running back system, so I, I can see some of that. I just question the production. And in terms of athleticism, I like that, so I like the potential. I, though I really still sit here and I question the production, but I think it's a B minus pick. We move on. 193rd pick inside linebacker Josh Forrest out of Kentucky. And I like Kentucky linebackers taking in the sixth round, fifth round, that they've been coming up and they've been making NFL rosters the past couple years. Avery Williamson, uh, that plays for the Tennessee Titans right now. Wesley Woodyard, who plays for the Tennessee Titans right now. And Josh Forrest now. These guys have been doing well because they're guys. Kentucky recruits a lot of guys that don't come from big time high schools. They bring them in, they teach them the game, they teach them really well. They learn the game. They get good instincts, experience under their belt, and they're able to perform. So I really like the pick and the potential here. I give it an A-. And we move on to their last pick, sixth round, yet again, 206th pick overall, Mike Thomas out of Southern Mississippi. A lot of people love this pick, and I can see that. I don't love it as much as everyone else. I give it a B plus. All right, he has nice... Uh, nice athleticism for the most part. Around a 4 5 3, 36 inch vertical, that's fine. I, big problems though in terms of this. Uh, came from Juco, Juco transfer. Didn't produce well at all uh, at the Juco level, neither or nor at the Southern Miss level. I mean, he was fine, but not particularly spectacular. Not a good run blocker at all. I question that fit at all. I think he's going to be a guy that, you know, says to the defense, if I'm out here, we're throwing early in his career, and that's going to be able, that's going to hurt and hinder his ability to stay on the field. So I question that. Also questioned here, uh, I was looking over at NFL.com, and they said uh, that he had a drop rate of 10.1%. So that's my source on that. Don't love that either. So higher drop rate he has good athleticism, nice motor. It's a it's a hit or miss pick. He really could hit. He really could miss. I, I give it a B plus. I like the athleticism there, but there are still some questions here. So I'm not going to say it's an A or A plus, as some people are saying. So overall, though, when you look at this Rams draft, I actually like it. And I don't want to say that loudly because the Rams have had hit or miss drafts in the past and Les Need has a very hit or miss background and going on record saying that I like something is really really dangerous when we're talking about the same uh, the Los Angeles Rams yeah, I think I did it already um but I think there are some nice potential picks here I think you got a starter quarterback or you definitely got a starter we'll just see if he's good a starter quarterback in Jared Goff a potential and eventual starter at Tyler Higbee I don't think Farrah Cooper is ever going to do much for you. I'm sorry for that, but that's just the case. And then maybe Tamarick Hemingway can actually make the team. Mike Thomas can make the team. And if they do, this draft will be better for you down the line. Overall, though, I put in these grades. We put them in, and the GPA calculator, it worked some magic. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Spat back out a GPA of 3.05 out of 4, which is equal to a B. And I think that's what they deserve. I, I think... You know, there are some nice picks here, some questions, you know, we'll see how things develop in the future, but the Rams draft better than years past, I would say. They didn't find an Aaron Donald or anything like that, but certainly respectable. And the biggest thing, did they find their franchise quarterback? We will find out in the years to come. Until next time, James Carter TV, I'm out. Peace.